Um, I want to thank you very much for the honor of giving us a lecture last night. Very inspiring. And of course, for us, the timing was uh, miraculous that we could uh, have you lecture only two days after you received the Pritzker Prize. You started very early by stating that in uh, China, new architectural developments, 90% uh, of traditional buildings in many places are being uh, demolished in order to make way for new construction. You, in your work, uh, have tried to find a way uh, to endeavor to counteract this by, um, at least initially, using materials from these, some of these demolished buildings as a way of, of crafting the, the fabric of the new buildings. And you called it a poetic of construction uh, with recycled materials. And I'm interested particularly in your notion of how the, these uh, pre-existing materials from old buildings how they would be, uh, as you say, recomposed, a, a kind of recomposition of memory, how it's possible to take the materials and by using these recycled materials, as you say, not so much emphasize the material as the notion that it, it, they contain uh, craftsmanship, a sense of time, and uh, memories of, of the people who live in this place. Usually I call my work is an echo or response to real reality. But what happens in the reality, I see it, I should do see some response. Uh, I'm not just a, a, is a professional architect that just do my work. I don't care what happened just out of, out of the windows. Yeah, so uh, another side, because I have, have uh, experiences, uh, in that time I do many small works, uh, renovation to the old buildings. Yeah, it's very important to me. I find, I usually I ask, well, for example, they have a traditional wall, bricks wall, tiles wall. I, I, I will ask the person, who living here, or rentally? Who touched this wall? Mm -hmm. You have many things here. So it's not just about materials. It's also about some people's, they touch it, they have some memory. Some people, they have the memory here. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more important then just talk about the material. Of course, ma material also important. Usually in China, the architects, they, they just join, talking. And the material is uh, after design, and they think about, oh, we use this material, and another material in the market, like some production. So it's not my way. So the third, I think, uh, I like the building like some fitting like this. It's not like some uh, modern building, they just come from some uh, abstract concept. Usually my building is like this. You will feel, uh, even if it's a quite new building, you still can find something before this exists there. Some existing things inside. Yeah, this is my feelings. So that's the why finally I get uh, so many touch, experience, works with the uh, craftsmen together because they need a craftsman to do it. There's a next story about how to do it. You mentioned a moment in the museum where you were talking to someone who came to visit the museum and they said that maybe they didn't come so much to see the museum, but because the fabric of the building was composed of the bricks, uh, she thought maybe she could find and touch the brick of the courtyard of her building, which yeah. no longer existed, yeah. which uh, of course was very moving a very yeah. moving thing. Yeah. And it reminded me uh, also of this uh, story that had been uh, in the um, National Public Radio interview where you had made drawings when you were very young yeah, yeah. Uh, on the walls of your house in Beijing yeah, yeah. and that you uh, went back years later and they had the people actually had uh, saved the drawings and uh, kept them, though they may now be yeah, under threat. Yeah, but yeah. this, this yeah. notion of touching the wall, you, yeah, in, inscribing yeah. your experience, yeah. in your case, directly into the yeah. wall is very very moving, but that seems to still be a theme that uh, works its way into the, uh, and, but now it's something that's available to others, yeah. others through the way that you use the materials. Usually my work is uh, <coughs> according to my memory. Yeah, that story also my memory. When I, when I have that very small childhood, I think that just uh, five years old, I joined many drawing on the Koya's world in Beijing, in the Hutong's Koya's world. Then I leave Beijing. Four or five years later, I come back, I find every drawing still in there. My neighborhood, there's a grandson, a grandfather, grandmother, it's neighborhoods. They keep this, preserve it. 
don't let any children to destroy it. They say it's a one shoe story. So we shall keep it here. So it's a really good, good feeling. It's, uh, for example, in the uh, Xiangshan campus, it's also about memory. Yeah, when I'm in the childhood, uh, it's a cultural revolution times in China. The school stopped. The students go back to home. Just a teacher in the campus. So every teacher become a farmer. Then they plant in the old campus. Mm -hmm. And the children also join the labor. It's really interesting things. For me, it's very happy. So it's finally I designed Xiangshan campus. But apart from the building groups, the dialogue to the mountains. Between this, I keep a large amount of farm field inside the campus. This is my memory. What would your advice be for, for your colleagues in the West working in China today? Don't be influenced by the, some popular times. It's our way. In the late 1980s, I just graduated from a school, so I want to do some new education. Uh, ex taste, experiment. But the interesting is I go into the art academy, I think, in China. In art academy, it means more freedom there. But, interesting, in China, artists, they don't know anything about architecture. They can't understand architecture. Till to the end of 1990s, the artists, they began to understand architects. So you, you can think what is the situation. For the common people, they, they most don't know about architecture like this. So that's why I finally I established the new school just after 2000 in Art National Art Academy. We want to do totally different things. More about hand drawing, hand making, material construction, uh, make some Chinese tradition, for example, calligraphy, uh, landscape drawing. It's, uh, I mix this together, do the, some uh, experiment. Many of my friends, as artists and friends, help me to do this. Of course, with the recognition, the great recognition that comes with the Pritzker Prize, you have now become the most important role model and perhaps spir spiritual mentor to the next generation of young Chinese architects. And we also have many um, students here at Washington University coming from China to, to study architecture here. What, would, what do you think would be the most important lesson I think they can draw from your career, from your architecture, mm -hmm. in finding their own paths, their future uh, directions in, in, the, in this vocation of architecture they have selected for themselves. I think it's very simple. It's uh, uh, to look and feel their way by themselves. Keep independent spirits and uh, insist long time enough. They will be successful. Welcome to the 2012 ceremony of the Pritzker Architectural Prize. I'm Tom Pritzker, chairman of the Hyatt Foundation. On behalf of the Pritzker Architectural Prize, our esteemed jury and the Pritzker family, we're very grateful for your presence at this, the 34th annual Pritzker Prize Award Ceremony in Beijing. There is a special resonance in the decision of the jury this year to award the 2012 Pritzker Prize for Architecture to Wang Shu. But in the works of Wang Shu, the jury saw the emergence for the first time of truly authentic contemporary Chinese architecture. For here are buildings of compelling originality that address the future but draw meaning and value from the past. Wang Xu, can I ask you to come up? On behalf
behalf of our family and the jury, I congratulate you and award you with the 2012 Pritzker Architectural Prize.